We've got several scriptures to look at today, and um, I want to, to talk to us a little bit about this time of the year, and uh, the title of the message is Living a Life of Thankfulness, Living a Life, a Lifetime of Thankfulness. Just turn to you, your neighbor and say, are you thankful? Are you thankful? This is a great time of the year to stop the presses, turn the thing around, and really focus. Because out of all the holidays, Thanksgiving, watch me, is probably my favorite. And it's a legitimate holiday, right? You say, well, what about some of the other holidays? Well, there's some things you could say about the holidays in general. There's some controversy involved in the timing. There's all these kinds of things that people have their feeling about as far as the traditions of Christmas, of Easter, and da 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 da. Right? Christmas trees, you name it. But Thanksgiving is one of those holidays. Holidays that the origins of which and the whole thing is really, really legitimate. And it's very powerful. I, I therefore take the time with my family and I, I want to encourage you to do so. This is one of the things that we try to do here in the holidays. And you guys know this. If you've been here for any length of time, we try to make sure that the holidays are a time for you and your family to celebrate and for you to have the opportunity to witness. And some of you have done that. How many of you have witnessed your family during the holidays? Oh, there's four, five, six. I want you to do that. This year, make it a point to take the time to minister to your family and to talk to them about thanksgiving and being thankful and being purposeful about it. Let the Holy Spirit use you. Be a mouthpiece for God. And tell your family about the goodness of God. And offer up a prayer so that your family can hear it from your lips. And maybe, just maybe... They'll make some changes in their life and include God. You know, and I've, I talked about it a few weeks ago, and, and this is important to me, and Sister Titus here is a witness, that a few months back, the Lord began to deal with me about my offering of thanks to the Lord. And I began to think about some of the things that Jesus taught us in His prayer the Lord's Prayer, where he taught the disciples how to pray. And he starts his prayer out completely different than, than many of us pray. Maybe you just rehearse the Lord's Prayer, and of course, if you did that, wonderful, but it can become a vain repetition. In other words, you're just spilling it out like God is good, God is great, and we thank Him for His food, you know, that kind of prayer. And you say, oh, I taught my children that prayer. Well, good, but let's get beyond that. Eventually, that needs to mature, right? And you need to, to really talk to God. Prayer is talking to God. But one of the first things that Jesus teaches us is to be thankful and, and give praise unto God for His name. And so, when I begin to think about that in my prayer life, I begin to think about the way I approached my prayer. And I've already made the confession, and you guys know this, that I'm a person of habit. And it's been this way all my life, and I have to really work at it to break my habits. Even prayer can, can sound the same all the time, right? Because you're trying to remember things, and your mind goes to, into a process. And so it's really not good communication to do that, right? If I said the same thing to you every time, after a while you'd say, don't you tell me that every time? 
We're not even having a conversation at that point. You're just rehearsing things that you say. So there's a problem with that, right? And so the Lord began to deal with me about my approach to Him and being thankful. So I purposefully, and even this morning as I was thinking about this message and things, I was thinking, you know, I really need to be very purposeful in the way I approach God and the way that I'm thankful to the Lord. So I began to just go through a list of things that I genuinely am thankful for. One of the things is Amy sitting here on the front row, her healing this last week, and I just said, God, I'm, I'm thankful for that, right? Get ready some of you guys. I thank you for two bucks this last week. That may not mean a thing to you, but I am thankful, right? I got meat in my freezer because of that. I'm thankful. I, I have a nice home, a couple of wonderful vehicles to, to ride in, even though they're not new. I have a nice bed to sleep on, shoes on my feet that my parishioners were so good to give to me. I have wonderful Clothe, and some of them come from some of you guys. I have all these things to be thankful for. And I, sometimes I forget to stop and to think that I am blessed and He daily loads me with benefits. There's people today all over this world who are suffering, have no place to lay their head, on the run, trying to survive, don't know what their kids are going to eat. Think about it. Not one, not two, not just 1,000, not just 10,000, but all across the world, there are literally millions who are not blessed like you. And yet, we don't take the time to say, God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I have that rotten job to go to every week that you bless me with so I can have money to buy my shoes and put a roof over my head. God, that supply comes from you. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful for your precious name. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for deliverance because I wasn't always set free. I was captive and in bondage, but you set me free. You set my feet upon a rock. You established my goings. I've seen somebody write that down just the other day. Beautiful scripture. To me, it's only right for myself and for you to take those few moments and just say, thank you. You taught your children to do that, didn't you? Come on. Somebody would give them candy. Some of you in this church, Brother Larry gives your kids candy and you, you make them stop and you say, what do you say? What do you say, kids? Come on, if you're not doing that as a parent, you need to start, right? Right? Teach them how to be appreciative. Teach them how to be respectful. Teach them good manners. All right. I'm going to say something here. You need to follow the same thing yourself. You have a hard time thanking anybody for anything. If you're like the rest of us, right? That waitress that has been working all day, if she doesn't get it all completely right, the first thing we're thinking about, ooh, a free meal. Ooh, it gets quiet. Instead of saying, dear, thank you. I know you've tried. You've had a hard day probably. Let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, even when it hurts. Our nation is so blessed, and we started out right, right? The Mayflower, who's ever heard of the Mayflower? In 1620, going out to seek a new life, the Puritans, to get away from the church at England, to have freedom of religion, 101 men and women and children were trying to get to New York. They ended up a little bit different than that in Cape Cod. As they prepared for winter, the legend says that one day one of the local Indian tribesmen, the leader of a particular Indian nation, come and visited with them. They had already by this time learned the English language because some of the other settlers had taught them. According to what we know, the Indians helped the settlers grow corn, use fish to fertilize their fields, and after several meetings and a formal agreement, the settlers and the native people come together. And in March of 1621, They made an agreement to protect each other. Later that fall, some of the settlers went to hunt for food. The Indians had heard some shots ring out, and their leader come to see if the English settlers had decided to go to war against them. Soon after their visit, they found out, no, it wasn't that way at all. The, The... Uh, the settlers had decided they were going to go out and have a celebration of their newfound freedom. They were hunting. So the Indians decided, well, well, we'll help out. And they went out, and guess what they shot? And if you say turkey, you're wrong. You guys know me. Why did I bring this up? Because they hunted deer, and they brought together a feast, and they celebrated deer, corns, shellfish, roasted meat, and they played ball games and sang and they danced. Although prayers and thanks were probably offered in 1621, the first recorded Thanksgiving uh, Day was in Plymouth, and it happened about two years later in 1623. On this occasion, the colonists gave thanks to God for rain after a two months drought. That was the first official Thanksgiving. We are blessed. We are blessed in this nation to have all the wonderful things that we have, but Are we thankful? That's the thing. People today, are they thankful? What's the answer to that? No. That's quite opposite, right? People are cold and indifferent. The Bible says, because iniquity abounds, the love of many has waxed cold. People have a sense of entitlement. Is that true? You can groan if you want to, or... Hum a little bit, it might help, but you know it's the truth. People are not thankful at all. It's quite opposite. And Timothy wrote about the last days and said it would be that way, and people would be unthankful. The Bible teaches us that our life is to be a life of thanksgiving. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. It says, in everything, how many things? Say it real loud. Say it, everything, give thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So in everything, that means the good, and that even means the bad. To live a life of thankfulness means that we're going to be grateful even when We have broccoli put on our plate. 
I'm trying to help some of you parents out. Instead of a, you know, piece of pie or something to go with our turkey right off the bat. No, you're going to eat your vegetables, right? And you're going to like it, right? You said that. What are you saying? Well, life is like that. We need to be thankful and everything because a lot of the things that we don't think are a blessing to us will eventually turn out and we'll understand it that it is a blessing. Even the hard things. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to understand how life really turns out and how some of the hard things in life really turns around to our good because the Bible said all things work together. And then it, it would be nice to know that in advance because... Later on, we usually find out if I'd had it my way, right? If it would have happened the way I wanted it to, it probably wouldn't have worked out. There's that song, remember, I tell you every once in a while, thank God for unanswered prayers. How many will say amen to that? Some things I really wanted to happen, if they would have happened, I wouldn't have been nearly as far along in life. So we're to be thankful in all things. To have this heart that God is taking care of me. In Colossians 3 and 15 it said, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, which you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We're to be thankful. Psalms 107 verse 21, turn there. Our main text is going to come from Luke chapter 17. But I want to look at a couple of scriptures before we get there. Psalms 107 and 21 says, Oh, that men would praise God. Why? Is it on the board? Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Why? Say it real loud. For his, is God good? How often? Oh, you got that, right? For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. This whole psalm is written in this order. It says many things about the same kind of logic. Oh, that men would just take the time and praise the Lord. Amen. What's the next verse? And let them... Remember what I've taught you about sacrifice? Does anybody in the house remember? It goes like this. A sacrifice is not a sacrifice unless it's a sacrifice. Now that's easy. Come on, say it with me. A sacrifice is not a sacrifice unless it is. Man, that's, that's one of them Brother Tyner-isms that you need to write down. That is so powerful. So stinking powerful. A sacrifice is not a sacrifice unless it's a sacrifice. That means it's going to cost you something. All right? So we're to sacrifice the sacrifice of what? Put it back up. The sacrifices of of thanksgiving. So, thanksgiving, giving God thanks, needs to be something from time to time. It's a sacrifice to do. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15. By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. So sometimes thanks is a sacrifice. And it needs to be a sacrifice. There's times that we don't feel like giving thanks, that we need to give thanks. Right? It's like, come here, Brother Joseph. Come here, man. We're meeting each other in Walmart. Hey, bro! Praise the Lord. Now, some people don't like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm doing fine. But, 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 there is times... That that needs to be our mindset. 
I'm going to put myself out a little bit. If I can bring a smile to his face and bring glory to God, that's a sacrifice. I need to do that. Amen. How's your morning been, brother? Nice day outside, isn't it? Not too much of a sacrifice. Somebody say, how you doing? Man, God is so good. That's what you was trying to get out of me. God is so good. God is great, man. He's been so good to me. And we're standing in line and other people are around me. Could that be a sacrifice? Absolutely. And there's times that, that our body and our mind is not there. And we need some a click in the Holy Spirit. Say, so here's one of those times I can give a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to my God. It's, my, it's the fruit of my lips that brings glory to the Lord. That takes me to a different level in Christ. He sees just like you do as your parent. As a parent. That that child that you raised is getting it. And you say, I'm proud of you, son. Or I'm proud of you, daughter. Because look at you. You remember to give thanks. You were polite. I didn't even have to tell you. And you looked at Brother Larry and said, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm proud of you. This is how I raised you. Can you imagine my heavenly father and your heavenly father, how he looks at us sometimes and says, those people are so ungrateful. They're, they don't have a mind. I've been trying to teach them. I give to them the best pastor in Muncie, Indiana. She didn't, all she does is sit there and smile at me. But, you see what I mean? God has blessed us. And we're to give a praise unto the Lord. We're to give Him respect and glory and honor. And it should be from our heart. It should be because that's the right thing to do. And we want to do it from this time forward, the rest of this week. I want this message to resonate in your ears. I want you to get up tomorrow morning and start this week out the best way you can by giving thanks unto the Lord. I want you to go through the week with a mindset of thankfulness and when you get together with your family, let it come out of your spirit and from this time on, start a process of giving God praise and thanks. Can I hear an amen? Praise God. I really want that with all my heart. The Bible says that we're to, in all of our ways, acknowledge Him. One of my favorite scriptures. In all of our ways. How can you do that? Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. What does that mean? To acknowledge Him. All around me. I'm a witness. Everywhere I go, everything I do, right? I can do different things to acknowledge the Lord in my life. The way I present myself, right? If I talk about the Lord in some kind of capacity, God's been good to me. I've been, I'm acknowledging that I'm a servant of the Lord. I can do it by the way, my, I, the way, ladies, that I present my home, right? For one thing, my home is presentable. Look at me and smile. Well, I'm helping you out. My home is a place of peace and honor. And it's, it's got an excellence to it. And that's something you women can help with. And men too. Run the sweeper, men. Come on, I would need to hear an amen from all the women. I know you were on edge just until then. Do some dishes every once in a while, guys. Right? You want love. That's a good way to get it right there. Just show some love back. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of this, guys. The women are doing this and... Amen, Pastor Tyner. Thank you. But, but what else can we do? Is there other things we can do to acknowledge God in our life? Yes. Right? We can take a Bible to the workplace. We can put a Bible on our dash. We can put one on the table and actually read it now and then. In all of our ways, we're to acknowledge Him. 
Now that's important because again, I'm telling you the scripture foretells that in the last days people will be unthankful. This particular scripture that I'm going to present to you today is one of the stories in the Bible that teaches us about thankfulness. And it's one that I really want us to pay attention to. Because when we're talking about these ten leprous men, we're talking about a good percentage, I think, of what is represented by those that do not give the Lord thanks. Let us read from Luke chapter 17, verse number 11. And it came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he entered into a certain village. And there met him, excuse me, ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now leprosy, for many of us that have been trained throughout the years, we understand it's a type and a shadow of sin. Right? Incurable. When you were diagnosed, With leprosy, there was no manly, earthly cure for leprosy. And still yet today, when it comes to sin, there is no cure for sin except for what? The blood of Jesus. And you need to be thankful. Because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's people here today, people that are watching, that are still in their sin. And they need to know something, don't they? They need to know that there's a solution and an answer to that. That the Lord Himself can come and transform their life. I love what I see with this new family here. All of them wanting to change their life. Give their heart to the Lord. Wow, I'm telling you, these are the last days and you need to make haste to make sure that your family is saved and that your life is right with God. Without that, you may be doomed to an eternity in hell. Today, it doesn't have to be that way. There's a cure. There's a balm in Gilead. And the blood of Jesus Christ still cleanses us from our sin. Praise God. Give the Lord a round of applause for it. And there were ten men that were lepers that stood afar off. Why? Why did they stand afar off? Because when you had leprosy, you weren't included in the community. You had to exile yourself away from everybody else. They weren't part of the rest of the Jewish family. Wow, what a tremendous struggle that was. Can you imagine? Not able to go other places that other people would go. Not ever... Not ever able to do the things that other people had freedom to do. And that when they met Jesus, they stood afar off because of it. And they lifted up their voices. They had to speak loud. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They got that master part right, right? A lot of people don't even have enough common sense to give God honor and glory. The world makes fun of Jesus. Oh, yes, they do. There's all kinds of things going on and don't you dare even give it a thought to watch some of that stuff. You turn it off. You, some of you that are watching some of that junk on YouTube that's not worthy of watching and people making fun of Christians. Well, I'm going to preach to you in a minute. I don't care if you do like Saturday Night Live and some of the other things. They start that junk, you turn that off immediately. Don't you even laugh at it. Because you're giving, you're giving honor to something that's not honorable to God. Is that good preaching? We've got a lot of Christians that watch things. Oh, that's funny. People mocking other people in the Spirit. There was a, a, a man that some of you had said was funny. And my wife and I, we turned it on. It supposed to be some kind of Christian comedian type thing. He went to a Spirit-filled church. And all they did was sit there. And they made fun of those spirit-filled people. Yeah. Don't you ever do that. Somebody start mocking someone in the spirit and shouting and speaking in tongues. Don't, Don't mock speaking in tongues. 
The only unforgivable sin is blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. You say, I don't think that's blas... Wait a minute. You've got to admit this. It's walking a tightrope. Don't you make fun of the Holy Spirit. Don't you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And don't laugh at people that mock others doing that. Oh, that's funny. They're, they're dancing this way. They're dancing that way. Oh, we got this kind of shout. We sh- somebody shouts like a chicken. Leave that stuff alone. I'm telling you, what, what might happen to you is God get a hold of you and you start dancing like a chicken. Tongues kind of come out of your mouth. It may sound pretty strange. I do you right. I, I take this stuff seriously. You say, Pastor, you're, you're, you're a throwback. You're an old-fashioned fuddy dud. I don't care what you say about me. I stand before a righteous, holy God, and I take these things seriously, and I'm trying to help you to make it to heaven. And we've got to watch some of the things that we do, some of the things that we participate in. If you think for a moment that it might be wrong, stay away from it. Don't walk the line. Don't stretch it. Is this good preaching? They said, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were all cleansed. Why did he tell them to go to the priest? I'm trying to teach you some things along the way. right? More than just a story. They had to go to the priest because that was the way to, to verify whether or not they could enter back into society. Without them going to the priest, they had no ability to enter back into the community. Now, we've come a long way from that. From God being that much of part of our life. And the church having that much part of our life. We don't respect the church like we ought to. We don't, expect, we don't respect the ministry like we ought to. And we walk like the Gentiles walk without any honor toward God. Oh, I just don't, I don't even know where I want to bring my t- kids to church. And, uh, you know, they, come on, get with it. Get some stuff together in your home and in your life. As far as me and my house, what are we going to do? Serve the Lord. Right, that's good. That's what we need to do. We need to settle some issues. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. In other words, you're clean. You're healed. Go, go show yourself to the priest so you can get back in, in line with life and go on with life. And, and, and my, what a change. What a wonderful thing to have happened to you. Death sentence lifted. Now you have all the hope in the world. A future. Remember what I said about this representing sin, right? The Lord cleanses you, sets you free. You ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. We ought to come in and jump and shout and give God praise. Because this is a glorious thing. We're now children of the King. We're joint heirs with Christ. He said He went away to prepare a place for us. Look at me. Oh, yes, this is important. This is the most wonderful thing that can ever happen. You've been set free. You had a death sentence sentence put on your life, and now you're free from that. Now you've got a a hope of eternal life, a a hope to walk with Jesus throughout eternity. And you you ought to be so thankful for it. Praise God. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? Where are the nine? They're not found that return to give glory to God, save this. Stranger. He was the only one, and he called him a stranger. Why? Because he was the Samaritan. That meant the rest of them were Jews. Remember, what was it, last week, week before last, week before last, and I was talking about the story of the Good Samaritan and why Jesus pinpointed that 
that Samaritan and why he made mention that it was a Samaritan, right? Because these people weren't counted worthy. They were, they were half-breeds. They, they weren't part of the family. They were outsiders just like the Gentiles. And so, so, so he's making a point here to, to us in his word to pinpoint that this man was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. And yet, out of all of them, he was the one that come back and said, thank you. And give glory to God. It's a shameful thing. Let me just take a moment here. Let's get real, real serious here. It's a shameful thing that God has been so good to us and we spend so little time. You start talking about attending church. Watch me. I'm going to get right where the rubber meets the road. And getting ourselves to the house of the Lord. You talk about paying tithes. You, talk, you start talking about living a godly life. Turning things around. Getting your family saved. And everybody gets tense. You know why? Because you're asking me to do something. You're putting me out. I've got, I've got to do more work on this. I've got to do... It's not supposed to be like this. I'm supposed to just be able to come and sit down in a pew and to hear some songs and think that I've done my God thing. I got my God thing on Sunday. I did it. Pat me on the back. Tell me I'm good. Tell, him, tell me I'm going to heaven. And we're, we're so spoiled. And if we do just a few things, we think we're doing something, right? The Bible says that we, our life is a living sacrifice. It's holy and acceptable before the Lord, and that's just your reasonable service. That's just your reasonable service. It's not asking something overboard. That's just your reasonable service to have your life as a living sacrifice. Why? Why? Because again, you were lost without God. You were undone. You were Gentiles. You were in bondage in sin. You were not worthy. And He made you worthy. He went to that cross with you in mind. You say, how could, it, how could He even know me? He knew you. He knew you. That's His Word. God is great. He's omniscient. He knew you and had you in mind when He went to the cross. And we look at this and we say, well, I'll give to Him what I want. I'll do what I want. I'll live like I want. And God can have the rest. Don't ask me to give more. Because I won't come and sit in your pews. Make me happy. Tell me I'm good. My job is not to always make you happy. My job is to help you to get to heaven. And if I can say one thing, even if you get mad at me, even if you, I had somebody tell me the other day, your approach is wrong. You need to soften it up a little bit. You, you prophesy people some Pretty hard thing sometimes, Pastor. You need to make sure that you turn that around. By the time they leave, they need to, to know everything's hunky-dory. And I'm thinking, I can't do that. I only can say what God said for me to say. Because that's what I'm responsible for. I want you to make it to heaven. I'm like, watch me. You women are going to get this, right? You guys are going to get it too. I'm like that guy. I'm similar to when your wife tells you, we got to talk. Come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, Ron. When Jen looks at you and says, we got to talk, you're thinking, oh, God, what did I do now? What did I do now? It's one of the most hateful things your wife can ever tell you. we got to talk. And she gives you that look. we got to talk. You know what I'm talking about, Nathan. We got to talk. And I'm that guy. I, 
this, this is my lot in life is to tell you some things that makes you think. And all I'm telling you right now is, is that we need to give God back that honor and say, you, you've given me everything. I got food on my table. I got shoes on my feet. I got clothes on my back. I've been saved. I was, I was in bondage. I was in sin. I've done some awful things. I was not worthy. But yet you love me enough to call me. To save me. I feel your Holy Spirit. When I pray, I mean, I get in touch with God. It's such a blessing. And you don't even realize the Bible calls it a treasure in an earthen vessel. Just to feel the Holy Spirit. This is something, watch me. The Bible says the angels desire to have. They don't have it. The prophets wrote about it, but they didn't get it. It would only move upon them, not live in them. Do you realize the Bible said that? And you're more blessed than the prophets. And you're more blessed than the angels. One day... You'll see what I'm saying. You're, and you don't know this, but you're already sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because in his mind, you're already the redeemed, you're the church, you're the blood bought, you're already sitting with him in heaven. And one day, when we get to heaven, you'll see this. When you meet him, and you look into his eyes, every long mile, every trial, every dime you ever gave, Every service you ever attended. You'll say, God, I'm so thankful. It was worth it. It was worth it. Close your eyes. Are you truly thankful? Are you really thankful? You say, I am. Okay. I I know that right now you are. What are you going to be tomorrow? What are you going to be next week? How are you going to live? In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. In all of your ways, give Him thanks. Sacrifice those praises. Teach your family. Tell your children. Do everything you can to bring glory to God. He's worthy. And one day when you stand before Him, I'm going to tell you something that's going to happen. First of all, watch me. Look at me. I'll give you permission. I'm going to close. We're not even to a quarter after yet. We're not going to have Wednesday night. So I can... I can have these next five minutes, right? You give me permission. When you walk this out, you're going you're gonna to figure this out, right? I'm going to put some of this together. The pieces are going to start coming together. And the more I do this, the more it's going to become part of me. I started out with a prayer a few months ago and it's changed my thought. It changed the way I live. And now I'm, I'm just taking time out wherever I'm at. I get out to the, to the hunting woods and I take my hat off. I don't have to do that, but the Bible talks about honoring your head. Christ is the head. I take my hat off. First thing I say is, God, thank you for this 
wonderful, glorious day. I'm just out there by myself, the stars shining, and Jeff, you, you know what I'm talking about. Stars shining and cool breeze in my face. I'm 65 years old. Been doing this for a long time. And I'm saying, God, thank you. I'm driving down the road in my car. A couple of my friends have worked on my grandson, Brother Mike. And it sometimes puts, but it's getting me where I want to go. And I say, thank you. I look at my beautiful wife. Almost 50 years. And I say, God, thank you. I look at my kids. Thank you. I look at my little Maltese that barks way too much. I say, thank you. I come to this church. I remember when the last one burnt down. We all stood outside. It was a whole congregation of people outside, tears running down people's face. And each one of them had a story. I got married in this church. I got baptized in this church. I seen my kids saved in this church. And now we rebuilt. We're here. And I walk into this place and I go, God, I'm thankful. I see your faces. Even our new families. And you guys. And you ladies. You guys. You. you. And I say, God, I'm thankful. Close your eyes one more time. Maybe you'll start seeing the beauty of things. The hand of God, the handiwork, how He's put things together for you. And maybe, just maybe, you'll give Him a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You know, I can just see old David I mentioned it this morning at Kickstart. <laughs> but I can just see David when the Ark of the Covenant entered back into Jerusalem. And he was so excited. He said, what can I give a king? What can I give a king? He owns everything. What can I give him? Watch me. Look at me again. He took off his robe, cast it aside. Everybody watching him. What's the king doing today? And he just starts whirling and dancing. And whirling and dancing before the Lord with all of his might, with everything he had. It must have been pretty ugly. Because his wife was his wife was despising him. You look like a fool. You taken off your clothes in front of the young women. She criticized him. He said, I didn't do it for you. And I didn't do it for them. I did it for God. 